Good morning. I am in the garden. I think I just heard a bee and I feel terrible. I passed by the chives and I knocked it down. I didn't see it. So I'm hoping she'll be okay. I just put her back on the chive. But I thought I'd go ahead and give you a tour of the garden. I have not done a tour because we've had awful weather, <laughs> like a lot of people. I'm in Washington State, if you don't know, so in 8B, and the weather has been horrendous. We always get rain, but we've had like torrential rain, windstorms, thunder, uh, some tornadoes, and it's made it really difficult to be outdoors or even grow anything. So I thought I'm still gonna show you because I have a lot of things that are growing that are so beautiful, I wanna share the names. And soon I will show you this potato vine, the most well-kept secret, I think, for some reason in the industry, more people need to grow this. It's really beautiful but look at this i have to show you i have to show you this remember that i made the chai vinegar in the last video and look how beautiful the pink color is and it's only been a week so i'm gonna keep it for about two more weeks and then we're gonna go ahead and have it so i will strain it and i'll show you how it looks at the end but it's stunning if you did not see that video so I'm gonna go check on the bee and see how she's doing. Oh, I think she flew away, so she should be okay. So before it rains, hopefully it will not rain. I wanna show you the garden, so let's get going. I thought I'd begin here on the patio area. There's so much growing in this little zone that I think you may wanna get to know some of the things that I have and may work in your garden. I got this lavender tree. I love lavender trees. Uh, but I, they don't make it on a pot through the winter so I'm gonna be planting this one I'm not sure if I plant it here or somewhere else I'm thinking I may plant it right here and then this one is a hydrangea pot I call it my hydrangea pot I'm trying to create a tree out of it and I twisted two branches there and put a bamboo stick on it and tied it and then I come in and I cut these bottom ones all the time so that this will grow like a tree and it already has little buds so it's coming doing good everything else is looking okay i did do a little corner here with a bamboo and my bamboo stick so this was the leftover bamboo screen that i used on the pond and then i have this cabinet that I started placing my ferns and other tropical plants here but it's gotten so cold that some of it is dying so I cannot <laughs> get stuff out so early here in Sony AB and Washington State you just can't do it and this is a table I use for some of the seedlings that I'm hardening right now it's a little sitting area and the maple is doing beautiful and everything I planted last year is still going so I am super happy how this maple is doing well in this corner because it doesn't get sun until the afternoon, but it's still doing well. And then I added this pot. I bought some green onions at the store and decided to use the, the root, the bulb, and plant it on these two pots. Because one year I planted them and they were so good. They were delicious. And then my husband bought me some strawberries, these pineapple ones. And they were so rubbed, I could barely split them. So they're a bit in shock, but they're coming back. I have these little cabinets. I love them. Um, it's great for when you're hardening seeds. And now I put the seedlings this way because I don't need to close this. I want them to get used to the temperature outside. But this is all my kale and different lettuces but you can close the top and the cabinet doors but i'm just hardening all this including some bok choy that looks beautiful down there and um this bed right here i um, gotta get it ready i leveled it with my husband we leveled this side created a little retaining wall there i'll show you a video and then as far as the sweet peas, they're not doing great. I think they rotted. We got such a huge amount of rain. I decided to direct sow them. So I have like four of them he here and I have one there. 
one randomly growing there <laughs> and I don't think there's any but one over there maybe two over there so I am going to be planting some beans on this back side and I have my alliums which I will be they're so pretty but these are glow masters and they have not grown very tall this year so I think I'm gonna as soon as they're done they're starting to go so if you see the little seed I'm gonna probably dig them out and that way I have this area for more dahlias and flowers that I'm growing from seed this is some type of miniature bamboo I think they call it I love it because it has this red leaves on the top it looks really pretty in the fall but I want to grow something here I think I may put a zinnia there and I love this yellow grass on the edges that looks so pretty I did dig it out over here because I'm gonna do some dwarf zinnias the short ones on the edge I have some like yarrow coming in here I think this is an echinacea that came in I have another yarrow there and I have one little dahlia that's coming here the other ones have not come up and I am praying that the rain did not rot the tubers because it has been an incredible amount of rain. For some reason, this one is really early. Usually they don't start coming up until like end of June or so. So I, I'm happy that it's out, but it's quite early. But this will be full of flowers. I'll be planting a lot of the cut flowers that I grew uh, this past spring. And this rose is a David Austin rose. I had no idea it was a David Austin. I got this when I first moved in the house, probably five, six years ago. And I did some research, found the tag, and it is a Mary Rose, I believe. And it is a beautiful pink. I don't know if it, they still sell it. I could not find it on the website. Maybe I missed it. But it has the most beautiful pink blooms and the fragrance is, it says medium fragrance, but it is unbelievable the amount of, of fragrance that you get out of this rose. Really beautiful and I am so happy I've kept it. I have to trim all those little ones because I keep it as a tree. This is the climbing hydrangea, interestingly enough. This side grew like crazy, which is weird because that side is on a tiny patch of soil there. And this one never grew and this year is starting to grow. But we're realizing that this is too much for climbing hydrangeas. I may have to get rid of this one after this year because this is probably going to take over. And the amazing thing is the first year is flowering, starting to flower. It's so pretty if it gets all full of blooms. I thought it was supposed to flower in August. So I'm a bit confused. It never flowered the last two years that I've had it. And now that's the only flowers I have those two. Not sure what is going on. So hopefully in August it will flower again. I'm not sure what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm hardening some more seedlings here. This is red Merlot. If you have not grown this lettuce, you have to. This is the most delicious lettuce I've ever had. And the slugs don't like them because it's bitter to them, but it's super good to us. Doesn't taste bitter at all. And I have some cabbage that I'm going to be placing on my tear planter, the screen stock. And then I have this rosemary that I'm also going to place on a pot but the potting table is pretty much ready i've been working from it already this is a honey berry and it's doing okay now that the sun is coming out it was getting a type of aphis i believe so right there so i have to treat it usually it doesn't get anything but the last two years the rain has been absolutely crazy This little sitting area in here and this is the box that my my husband built me and I'm pretty much right now have snap peas on the back and a lot of lettuce for my bunny
pretty soon I'll be replacing that with peppers and things like that. And then this is a new clematis I added. And this clematis is beautiful. I think this is one is called Sibaldi or Sibaldi. That's the label. And it's just it's starting to open up. But it changes it gets more colors in it in the center but it's just starting right now but it's so pretty and it's quite happy on this trellis this is another honeyberry i have and this one is doing a lot better because it gets a lot more sun i keep it as a tree by taking all the branches off the bottom and it works really well I'm working on this area right now. My strawberries are going crazy and I'm starting to get some flowers on it. These are little strawberries I was going to give away because I don't need this many. I moved the hostas to this area and they're doing okay right now. I have to show you this herb. It smells amazing. I don't like oregano that much so I grow a marjoram and it smells so good and it has like a citrusy kind of taste. It's sweeter than the oregano. It's not so pungent. I just don't like how strong the oregano is. But this also makes such a beautiful stamen in garden beds. I love it because it softens the edges and the color is gorgeous. Let me show you. Look what a beautiful color. It's super soft. I really like it on, I have it on my green stuff, but I also put it on the edge of the garden beds. You can use it on salads, you can use it on soups, to cook a stew. It is really, really delicious. If you are looking for something that makes a stamina on your bed, that is it. Also, it says that it doesn't last through the cold, but we have super cold weather here the last couple years, and look how big it is. It's, I've had it for two or three years in this green stock, and it grows like crazy beautiful maple tree very happy where it is again i cut all the bottom branches keep it very open so that my plants will get some sun and then there's the rose that i planted not long ago it's doing quite well it doesn't get sun it's sun in the morning and then it stops getting sun and pretty soon it'll start getting sun again so we'll see if that's enough sun for it to grow here or i may have to move it next year and then i have three different clematises growing right here. The clematises are probably about four years old, maybe five. So they are really, really large. You can see how wide each one is. I don't have the names, but if I get them, I will share them. They bloom summer through probably almost early fall. This Floribunda is white little roses. I showed this on the rose video and rose trees are incredible. This is doing really well. I cut it back hard prune really really far back and it's doing so good it's getting new bolts and I have some other alliums that are growing here but again I'm going to be removing these also so that I can grow some other things like senias and dahlias and things in here and I added these too because I want to grow some more either squashes or peppers here this is the rose that I show in the rose video. I did a hard prune on it and it's doing incredible. It's starting, it's already gone all the way up there and it was like, I think I cut it to down here and it's growing all that. It's starting to bloom. But we've got a lot, we've got so much rain that the blooms are not looking very happy here because it doesn't get as much sun as the ones on the front. And we finished this area, so the we have the pond behind the pond we have a clematis that one is a group two that is a repeat bloomer and it blooms i'll place the name on the screen but this blooms in the like may april may and then now it's going to bloom a second time it's getting another flush of flowers it's doing really well i just pruned back all the dead flowers that i think are taking the energy off of it And I got these three pots ready to grow some veggies. And this is my hydrangea tree. It's 
starting to get little blooms right there. I love hydrangea. I, I get a lot of trees and the small garden trees work so well. Here's the rose trees and you saw the other one back there. Because you can plant and have things all around. A little sitting area. This rose that I planted had done really poorly because it got really cold out and it's gotten super windy. We had incredible storms, but I just saw that it's getting a ton of new growth. So I'm going to clip it back and let it get some new growth and get strong again and probably fertilize it pretty soon here. I have this pot. Everything is from last year. So this sage, I'm letting it go to flower just so that the birds, hummingbirds have something. But I'm going to be doing this box. I do allow the rose to grow on this trellis because I think it looks really pretty. It kind of goes deeper like that. But I do want to get more flowers in here. So I'm going to dig all this out and redo it. And then I started placing my green stalks right here i'm working on this area and they're next to my chicken coop i hope this video really inspired you to get going on your garden if you enjoyed the video and learned something please give it a thumbs up to support the channel this is a new bed and this one is doing really good is i have some pansies this bed i just planted some lettuces romaine lettuce i have some parsley from last year here that's starting to bolt a little so i'm gonna cut it back and then those are snap peas i'm growing there but i ordered some new trellises that i'm gonna put one here and one over here hopefully they get here pretty soon and i don't know if you saw when i did the pond video that we moved this beautiful rose that was in the back there we had to move it forward so it got enough light and had enough space. I thought it may die because we really butchered the uh, roots pretty good. But it's doing really well. Look at that. This rose is so resilient. It really has put up with so much. But it's really beautiful. It has this really bright orange um, blooms. I'm trying to like get so it doesn't show but you can see kind of the color. It's really a beautiful one. Here's another one that's coming out. So yeah, it's pretty happy. I haven't planted any of these. The dahlias that I have here, I don't know if they made it. I'm giving it a chance and then I'll decide if I keep them or not. I did get this beautiful hanging piece that I plan to dress up. It hangs from the tree. I don't want to put too much weight on it, but... And then this rose right here is starting to get blooms. Doing really well. Yesterday I trim all the bottom. And again on that rose video you can see exactly how I do it, but I trim the bottom so that it's nice and clean. It doesn't get sick. This is also just all snap peas sage all this stuff will be taken out and a lot of lettuce i need to harvest a lot of lettuce and my lilac is doing really good look how beautiful it's blooming really nicely it's full of these they're bees love it so i want to cut it but i don't have a lot of flowers right now and because the bees love it i feel bad taking the lilacs so i may leave them for them <laughs> they're working hard and then these two pots i added here i'm going to be growing the tomatillos on it these are going to be eggplants and in here i'm going to grow tomato and tomato and they're indeterminate tomatoes
this is where I have honeysuckles. I have two different ones. It needs to be probably trimmed because look, they're going a little crazy. So I may spend time doing that maybe next weekend when it stops raining. I think it's going to start raining for like two weeks. And this here is the rose that I moved from the secret garden and it's growing really well. I wasn't sure how it would do, but it's, it's growing okay. Not totally traumatized. I have another coop here with more quails. These are calico quails. They're gray in color. This is the most well-kept secret. I don't know why more people are not talking about this, but this blue potato vine is probably the most incredible thing I have in my entire garden to me. I just absolutely love it. It has created such a colorful, like cozy vibe in this area in the secret garden when you first come in. I really love it. So let me show you all about it. This grows and you can train it to be a tree. It's one of my favorite vines i've ever seen now it's toxic to animals you have to be careful but it gives the potato little flowers look how beautiful this plant doesn't give you potatoes it's from the nightshade family so it's with the eggplants tomatoes this tree is really truly one of the most incredible ones i have i grow it by placing it was a tiny little vine and I let three stalks grow really large and I placed the trellis now it grows really fast so it will get really heavy this one got really heavy and in one of our windstorms that we get we it broke the leg I have to fix that so I I tried I clipped the ones that go towards the neighbor because if not it starts falling that way but it just makes it's almost like purple lace growing through here so pretty I, I just love it I think it's so unusual so in here I we just removed this sort of it looks I think it's a type of little bamboo and it was just taking over the roots were growing all over the place and we just decided to remove it and now I'm trying to decide what to grow here it needs to be narrow on this side so it's not in front of this and in here I, this is my hydrangea i don't remember the names of this i think this is a blue hydrangea but i can't even remember this one because i moved another hydrangea back here but i think that's a blue one this is the area that i'm most excited about this year because i am creating a tiny miniature orchard for ourselves and i want to grow as many perennials as i can here but everything that i want to grow on this side of the garden right on this little aisle is going to be edible so i'm growing all sorts of fruit trees in it Apart from the tree, I'm also going to be planting some perennials that are like artichoke. I'm also going to plant some calendula because I know it spreads and survives usually here. And I'll do the, I think it's the resin that you can do different things with it. But I'll go through each one of these trees. They are dwarf trees so that you know in case you're interested in creating your mini orchard in your tiny backyard. This is a colonnade apple. Those two lemon ones, they are dwarf types and this is a golden sentinel colonnade apple so it's going to grow like a column like this picture so it won't take a lot of space and i think it grows eight feet tall no 10 to 12 feet tall so it's going to be a nice and it had a lot of flowers so i am hoping see there's fruit already coming and i have another an apple espalier on the side of my house on the front and so i have two apple trees that can cross pollinate they, it doesn't matter they're a little far away from each other and this is a peach tree this is a dwarf uh, this is let's see pixie miniature peach now one of i got two different peaches peach trees but one of them doesn't need to be cross pollinated so you can get uh, dwarf peach trees that are that you don't have to cross pollinate I just wanted to get two of them so I got this one and then I got this one here and this one is a snow babe miniature peach so 
So these are both miniature and I cannot recall, I'm sorry, which one is the one that doesn't need press pollination. Let me see if it says anything. It doesn't. If I find out, I'll place it on the screen. And then I think this is a kumquat. So we'll see soon enough if they give fruit. And then I have another David Austin rose here. It's like climbing rose that I have on our trellis and it's doing well also because I can see the blooms which I'm really happy because the amount of rain we've had and when I thought either would be really sick but it's quite happy. We are building this patio right now from the leftover uh, stones that we had for the pond and we're going to be doing a custom potting bench here eventually we'll get a, a small greenhouse there replace that and then we're starting to create a little sitting area here so that's on the way and this is a hydrangea tree also and let me see if i see the name this is a hydrangea paniculata phantom hydrangea has some alliums in here this is where i think i'm going to bring the alliums to grow because they look really pretty with other plants so i think i may put them here in the fall and then another maple that lives on a trellis i was going to start cutting it really short towards the trellis it was more flat but i really like the shape of it so i'm gonna let it grow out and not worry we have to find where to put that and this here I'm, i'll put the name on the screen it's called snow snow something but it gives this tiny little super little you can see this little tiny um flowers are about to come out they're like super light pink they're beautiful but it's growing on a pole and I'm just making it into like a little vertical piece like a vertical shrub and if you can see it's on a pole in there and it grows these limbs that go down like a waterfall really beautiful and it's just full of blooms you can see those are all blooms coming out so you get blooms for a really short amount of time um, but I think the shape of it adds so much against this vine they look really beautiful together I thought I'd give you a quick glimpse of the front because it is pretty much all perennials the only thing is the pansies and they've all volunteer in the front so I haven't planted anything except for the new rose trees <laughs> 